Thanks for joining us today as we continue our discussion on fatigue testing. In our previous fatigue testing video, we discussed a few of the most commonly asked questions we often hear from our customers regarding their fatigue testing. As promised, today we're going to address many of your questions regarding SN curves. We'll take a deeper look at how we generate SN curves, plot test results, and ultimately interpret test results in order to provide customers like you the actionable data required to accomplish your material or product development challenges. When performing high cycle fatigue testing, results are typically displayed as an SN curve, also known as a fatigue or Wooler curve. For August Wooler, one of the most influential figures in helping to develop our understanding of material fatigue. Here's an example of a typical SN curve, where S, the cyclic stress range, is plotted on the X axis, while N, the number of cycles to failure, is plotted on the Y axis using a log log scale. Thanks, Elise. Further, Using mathematical equations, it is possible to predict the number of cycles that a material will survive given a specific stress level and vice versa. This data is extremely useful to design engineers who are tasked with designing a product or structure for maximum performance within the material's fatigue limit. Now that we understand more about what an SN curve is, let's talk briefly about how Accutech project engineers generate these curves. In order to generate a fatigue curve, multiple specimens, also known as coupons, must be tested at varying load levels. The results, or number of cycles to failure, are plotted against the corresponding stress ranges. The SN curve is the result of these data points. In general, most SN curves will consist of at least one or two runouts, which are specimens that do not fail within a predetermined number of cycles, typically between 1 and 10 million. In order to choose appropriate load levels, a test is typically started to target the top third of the curve using available data or book values. Test engineers will then use the values obtained from the initial test to determine which load levels are appropriate for completing the curve. Typically, quick failures are achieved first and loads are stepped down to produce longer life data points. To reduce scatter and increase statistical significance, a typical fatigue curve might consist of five stress levels with three replicates at each data point for a total of 15 specimens. In general, more specimens you are willing to test, the greater statistical confidence you can have in the results. Fatigue curves for medical devices typically consist of six test specimens with two targeted runouts. Fatigue testing for SN curves can be a time-consuming process. Not surprisingly, this leads to one of the most commonly asked questions our engineering team receives from customers in a hurry. I need fatigue testing results as soon as possible. What can I do to expedite the process? The easiest way to decrease test time is to increase the test frequency or the test speed. Fatigue tests typically run up to 100 Hz. However, as frequency is increased, strain rate effects and specimen heating can become a concern. Typical test frequencies for high cycle fatigue range anywhere from 5 to 50 Hz. That's right, Elise. Keep in mind that in addition to test frequency, Accutech specifically offers several options to clients in a pinch for results. First, because Accutech's lab houses over 100 test machines, we are able to offer much more capacity than similar labs. This allows us to set up your tests on multiple frames and run several samples simultaneously. This can have a huge impact on testing time. Thanks, Kevin. In addition, Accutech offers expedite delivery options for test reports, pushing your project to the top of our priority list. You're right, Elise. Also, before we wrap up, it's worth noting that Accutech's team is known for our commitment to providing customers with the most convenient options at all times, even for those time-sensitive projects. That's all we have for today. We hope that you found this information helpful. Don't forget to stay tuned for the final video in our fatigue testing series. And as always, feel free to reach out to us with any questions you have or to discuss an upcoming project.